fun, let's go outside, let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see, a big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Pat Becker, and we've got a super show for you today. Our friend Kay Stout is here with us, yep. and she has a new opportunity, a new job, and I am so pleased with it. This is Rhonda Norris. Rhonda, how are you? I'm good. And you are involved with uh, Kay in this project. Now, tell me about this. Tell me about your project, P-A-A-S. Yeah, Paws Vanita. It's Peaceful Animal Adoption Shelter. And it was started by a concerned group of people who wanted to change the face of the homeless dogs and cats. In, in Vanita. No in northeastern Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And uh, we opened in April 17th of last year. And as of yesterday at noon, it's, the number's now increased, we had sent or saved 342 dogs and cats. That's excellent. As you know, I always uh, am very concerned about the rural areas mm -hmm. around our municipalities that are yes. so much larger because the funds are with the bigger cities. It's hard. It's difficult for rescues. It's difficult for shelters. It's difficult for people. So you get a lot of use and misuse in these particular areas. Yes, you now do. tell me, Rhonda, you are a veterinarian? I'm a veterinary technician. A veterinary, a vet tech, excellent. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your dog. It, it's wearing a, a jacket here that has, I'm not, it's a therapeutic. Therape this is Eli, um, he is a, tomorrow's his one year birthday. Uh -huh. um, I've had, I'm a volunteer trainer for therapeutics. He's a large dog. He is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a volunteer trainer for therapeutics um, and at some point, um, in the near future, he'll be probably be placed with a PTSD veteran. Um, so, so tell me, tell me what what goes on in, in your organization. The first thing we do uh, when we first opened, we did owner surrenders just to try to get control of the population. Uh -huh. And initially, we had 152 p cats waiting to come in and 150 dogs. As we worked through that, then we begin we continued to work with the Vanita Pound, and they have not had to euthanize this past year for anything except aggression and illness. We've been able to save every other adoptable dog that's come through their facility. And then we also rescue from Ketchum, Langley, Chelsea, and now we're working with the prior municipal shelter as well. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what is your position there? What do you do there, Rhonda? Um, it's my responsibility to take in all of the animals. I pull all the animals from um, our local You're the pounds. intake coordinator mm -hmm. then, really, yes. virtually. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, and I do their medical, you know, their basic medical assessment, and, um, um, their vaccinations, all their testing, oh. and then we coordinate their um, transport. Oh. Um, it, it is such a badly needed, as I say, facility, and I am so pleased and proud. When you called me and were telling me about this, I went, thank goodness. Thank you. Why can't we have multiple of what you do We'd in our, our rural areas. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, there again, all, you know, but for funding. So yes. how are you all funded? We're funded through not only the supporters uh, there in the local community, but we have a family that is deeply committed to changing the face in, of homeless dogs and cats. And it's the Cressup family. Uh -huh. And thanks to them, we are able to really fulfill that dream and that mission and that vision. And to realize we've done it in six months that we've so significantly impacted the homeless dogs and cats in that area really gives us hope that it could be replicated in other areas, rural areas especially. Yeah, it, it is just remarkable. So it is privately funded then. Do you receive Somewhat privately fund? funded. We're okay. 501c3. Right. Oh, we, excellent. Yeah, and we do fundraisers and we have local contributors. But as with any organization when it's first getting started, you need somebody who really sees your vision to help you get it going. Absolutely. And so they provide that basis, but it's not privately funded. And, just and you know, it is a struggle to change yes, the is. minds and the hearts yes. of people who probably don't care as much as we. That's right. Uh, and, and so it, it is. It's a, it's a matter of education. Yes. So spreading the word, doing what you do, uh, influencing people that way is extraordinary. And we would like from Dog Talk to give you a check for $500 oh. to oh, contribute wow. in a small way, however you that need this. Wonderful. No. So, and we thank you so much for coming. It has just been remarkable. And keep on keeping on. Will you come back? Anytime. Because I would love to, to have some input as far as it, to catch up to see what's going on there. Rurally, it's so important, right? Yeah, I'll thank stay in you, touch Kate. with you at any time. I appreciate that. Rhonda, thank you so thank much. You. 
And uh, this dog, if he, I've got a little park out there, if he feels like running around, that probably would be a good oh, thing. Oh, you would him. love it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. And actually, we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Jones with a little um, thing about allergies. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Jones with Woodlake Animal Hospital. And today we're going to talk about allergies. Do you have an itchy, scratchy pet at home? That actually may be an allergy. Now, dogs can have allergies to lots of different things. Um, one thing is fleas. And sometimes fleas can make a dog extremely itchy. Even just one flea bite, if they're truly allergic to it, can make them scratch and itch all over. They can get hives and welts and sometimes even some facial swelling. Another thing that a dog can be allergic to is their food. Now, a lot of dog foods out there contain common ingredients like chicken, beef, pork, lamb, corn, and wheat. Now a dog may actually develop an allergy to one of those uh, ingredients. So there are some special um, allergy diets out there with very limited ingredients to kind of help dogs who actually do have uh, a food allergy. Um, some of the hardest things to diagnose are our environmental allergens. A dog can be allergic to anything. It can be allergic to house mites, dust mites. Um, it sounds funny, but if you have a cat, your dog can be allergic to your cat. Uh, and also, you, the dog can be allergic to you. Um, so what we want to try to do is if you do have an itchy, scratchy pet, um, or a dog that scoots quite a bit, or licks their belly, or chews between their toes, or shakes their heads a lot, or gets lots of ear infections, we want to try to find out what they're allergic to. So make sure your pet always has flea or tick prevention on. Make sure they always take their heartworm pills that'll help um, get rid of in intestinal parasites. And you might try a hypoallergenic diet as well. There are some safe over-the-counter antihistamines to give them, but consult your veterinarian before you actually give them something. And if we still can't figure out what the dog is allergic to, well, then it may be time for some allergy testing. And that's typically done at a veterinary dermatologist. So ask your veterinarian uh, about a referral to a veterinary dermatologist who can do actual allergy testing, find out exactly what the pet is allergic to, and then get them injections based on what they're allergic to to help uh, your pet be free from allergies. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. All right, welcome back. I'm with Susan Owen. We see her quite often here with the uh, Scout film. Yes. And uh, Tugboat here. This is Tug. <laughs> He's ready to work. Yeah. Yes. Well, now, if, if someone has never seen one of your videos or anything, really? tell them what you do a little bit, okay. just real quick. Um, we make videos for film and television and do photo shoots. We do advertisements. We do all sorts of work. And the dogs are the principal characters. So the dogs are always the star. Tugs and, the star. Yeah. He's been in lots and lots of movies, lots of adverts, lots of... Um, uh, photo shoots, and so he's quite comfortable, as you can see, oh, yeah. with his stardom. That's yeah. right. He's got a bow tie yeah. here, like yeah. uh, James Bond. That's right. We match. So. <laughs> see? Yeah. <laughs> now, you had a, a video you wanted to show us mm -hmm. here. All right, let's take a look at that. My friends and I decided to find some fun, inexpensive things to do right here in Oklahoma City. One of the first things we did was to go to Betty's Pond to let the dog swim and ride on the paddle boat. Frisbee is another fun thing to do. All you need is a field, a dog, and a frisbee. Orange Leaf welcomes dogs on their patio. Here we have Heidi, Ellie, and Wicket enjoying the strawberry and vanilla yogurt. I headed down to the Boathouse District with Shelly, Alice, and Lee. This is a busy place now. Lots of things going on, lots of building. It's a great place to walk the dogs. Next, we went to Bricktown. The first stop was Fuzzy's Tacos for lunch, where they love dogs. They brought out fresh ice water and brought a bandana for every dog. lucky was this. We got special permission to take the dogs on one of the canal boats for a ride through Bricktown. We had so much fun. The dogs all loved it and no one tried to jump out. We 
We stopped off at the Midtown Mutt's Dog Park and let the dogs run around for a while. It's a nice park and as you can see, everyone enjoyed it. The next day was the Trey Sueños Winery with Lydia, Betty, and Victoria. It is totally dog friendly. Dogs are welcome in the vineyard and on the patio. We had wine and cheese on the patio, plus you can buy bottles of wine to take home with you. Half Price Books is a nice place to go with your dog, especially in Oklahoma where the summer temperatures can be over 100 degrees. It's really nice to be able to sit inside and read a book with your dog. Bob and I took Tug and Napoleon to the Paseo. It's a beautiful historical area and has an amazing dog-friendly restaurant called Picasso Cafe. They even have a menu item for dogs called a dog bowl. It's a chicken salad and the dogs loved it. Well, mostly they love the chicken. Jamba Juice also welcomes dogs on the patio. Kristen, Maggie, and Blitz are enjoying a drink after gymnastics class. Markham's Nursery also welcomes friendly dogs. Connie and Rogue did some shopping and then it was on to DQ for ice cream. Rogue did a little visiting with the senior citizen group and enjoyed more ice cream. Get out with your dog here in Oklahoma City this summer and let us know here at Dog Talk if you find other dog friendly places. Well, Tug had a long day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tug has been everywhere and he was tired after that. That was You know, the one thing that I love about that video is mm -hmm. and I think some people, if there's one negative to having a dog, they think, well, I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything because I have a dog, I gotta stay home, I gotta be home. Wow. There is a lot to do in this town. There really is, and that was not even the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more, and we'd like to do another one, showing some places a little farther out. Of Absolutely. The city. But there are so many places you can take your dog, and they're getting more and more. And places that your dog can also eat with you, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, we have a, a video contest mm -hmm. that we're going to do. Right. Want to tell us a little bit about it? Yes. It's going to be a video, a 15-second video, and I'd love for everybody to send us one. And the theme this time is going to be dog in a box. So you teach your dog to get in a box. can be any kind of box. can be anywhere you want to. Um, just teach them. Uh, to get in the box and then send it to us and then we'll look at all of them and decide a first place winner. It's a hundred dollars for oh, the first wow. place and we'll show it on the Facebook page. Now I can't enter. I can't get in a box. Uh, it? No, no. Your <laughs> dog could though. Okay, we'll yeah. try. Well, I don't yeah. know if I'll be able to do that. Yeah, you'd need a big box. Yeah, <laughs> for Duke. But yeah, we are, um, so it's going to be judged on um, the speed that the dog gets in, the enthusiasm. We want to see happy dogs. Happy okay. dogs, you know, um, jumping in boxes, all kinds of boxes all over the place. They can jump in more than one box if they want to. So, but, dog in a box, 15 second video, and we send it to... To me at Susan at ScoutFilmCompany.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the winner will be posted on our Facebook page right. as well as Susan's. And a hundred dollars, don't forget that. Oh yeah, and a hundred yeah, bucks. They no get a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's the price, right? Yeah. All right, well, when we come back, Pat is going to sit down with some trainers and we're going to talk about a little discussion. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. 
Hey, Dog Talk fans, I hope you're enjoying the show. If you want to join the conversation afterwards, just join us on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash dogtalktv. We'd love to hear what you think. For your chance to be featured as one of our Dog of the Week, send us an email with a picture of your furry friend and a short little story to pat at dogtalktv.com. Now, back to the show. How lucky we are to have our trainers with us today. Annabelle, Kathy, Angie, how are you guys? Good, Wonderful. thank you. Of course, we will miss your son, but I'm delighted <laughs> that, that you uh, have acquiesced and jumped in in his place because he he's busy. He had a commitment today, and I didn't this time. So. I am delighted. I am delighted. Well, we have, this time we are going to answer your questions, and we've had some pretty interesting ones. I selected those that I think are outstanding, and so we'll start with you. What is What question did you get, Annabelle? I got the one about how to choose the right dog for uh, elderly people, or what I like to say, aging youth. Oh. <laughs> and as I enter aging youth, um, I the had to think- wisdom. That's right, I had to think about these things, and uh, talking about what kind of dog is right, and I really believe you have to match the energy level of the people. A lot of times um, elderly people will pick out a smaller dog, but that's not always the answer because there are some smaller dogs that are little pistols, mm -hmm. have a lot of energy and too much for them. So with an older person, then because we see a lot of older people who make the mistake of, of getting large dogs and mm -hmm. then they are pulled down, right. they fall down, they trip over them. Uh, no dog is a perfect dog, no. so you have a better chance, what? With a with the smaller dog, a smaller dog can be one, and one that matches their energy level. I won't say that all older people are just you know sitting and want lap dogs because some older people are very busy. We certainly are. But that's you know you have to consider what the person is doing in their lifestyle on a daily basis and how often they're home. Absolutely, all those things. That that's very good information, folks. Very very good information. So did we give a question then with you? What was your the question? My question um, to answer for those of you that are always concerned about how to bring a new dog home, especially a new male dog into a household that already has a male dog. Uh, and the first absolute major most important thing is the dog should not meet. Once you bring the dog home, you should go out onto neutral territory, maybe even several times, so that the dogs can assess and learn about each other without one being possessive of their territory. And it should then be, once they are brought home, if you think they're going to be compatible, you should bring your dog from inside the home out to the front yard and let them reacquaint with one another there. And then maybe start out in the backyard and see how they are loose there before you take them into the enclosed proximity of the home. And it's, it has to be done in stages because once you bring a dog home and just throw them together, it's going to be too late. Yeah. You, it's hard to backtrack that. It's like rolling the dice. Exactly. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. So you want to be more sure about it. And your yeah. advice is excellent. That is so, so true because people will do that. Um, and I always say, you know, if you have an older dog, you know, you want to get a younger one, you want to get a, a new dog, or the temptation is there, you might hesitate a little bit. Well, the bit. energy level of the younger dog, even in my household, my seven and a half year old isn't as tolerant of the two-year-old that is more playful still. And these have grown up together, essentially. You know, she's been a part of, she was born at my house, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, there's still those issues that you have to deal with in selecting the other dog. And, and what, sometimes it clicks just like that. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes you are lucky enough to have that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so what breeds of dogs would you say were best integrated? I, I can't really say breeds. It's the dog itself, its temperament, because most all the breeds get along really well. Mm -hmm. But your little toy dogs can be a little snippy, but they make up for size by being snippy. Um, and a lot of the pack hounds, which are used to working in packs, yeah. uh, integrate uh, easier. Those dogs that are used to, because of their occupation, mm -hmm. being um, herding breeds and things like that, they do that pretty much by themselves. So they are a little bit more independent. But a dog that gets older, no matter what breed it is, has already established its territory. Exactly. And its claim on the owner. 
Yeah. So this is this is this is the difficult. Resource guarding can yeah. be a big thing. Big thing. Absolutely. Even with younger dogs, especially dogs that are small that people are carrying around and snuggling with all the time. Um, they make it even harder for sometimes the smaller dogs to accept somebody else mm -hmm. in their territory. So your advice has been excellent and we appreciate it. Take it to heart, guys. Now, we're getting to a subject, a question that Angie had that all three of us were very interested in. So what was this person's question? This person's question is that they're recently divorced. They live in an apartment that allows dogs. They want a dog that doesn't shed much and doesn't have any odor and they want to do obedience things. Mm -hmm. um, I believe he said, he or she said, compete in obedience. And I've got a lot of questions about this simply because for me personally, that's not enough information. Uh, I need to know yeah. whether you work at home, whether you have free time at lunch that you can come home, whether you want a puppy or an adult dog, um, how much time are you willing to devote to this dog? Is your social life going to get in the way of taking care of this dog? Because every day when you come home to work, from work, you're going to have to take it out and walk it. And, oh, it's going to have to be housebroken, so you might have to come home at lunchtime to take it out. Are you willing to do all those things? But let's assume for a minute that you're willing to do anything you need to do to take care of this dog. The American Kennel Club has a great website that talks about dogs that don't shed much that talks about exercise limitations and whatnot for dogs. It also tells you about dogs that uh, require a lot of grooming. And sometimes your dogs that don't shed much require the beauty shop on a regular basis. Um, the dogs that really are truly hairless, like the Sholo Exquintly and the Chinese Cresteds and the Inca Orchids, there are other things that you have to consider, particularly when you do obedience with them, and one of them is the hairlessness. A lot of dogs do not understand dogs that don't have hair. Mm -hmm. They really don't. Um, how much grooming do you personally want to do at home? And what is your temperament and energy level? You're going to bring a German Shepherd, for instance, that's a high-energy dog, into an apartment setting and not be willing to run with it in the morning for two or three miles before you go to work mm -hmm. and come home and take it out and give it exercise? How much time are you going to devote to the training? Because going to obedience trials and classes, that takes up a, a lot of time. And actually, yeah, it it's a most, <laughs> mostly devoted thing. Yeah. If I told you how many hours a week I spend and how many meals we eat as sandwiches to train dogs, you would be appalled. But that's my life, and that's what I like to do. Yeah, and you know, this, it was so, such an interesting email that I got, and it was from a man who was recently divorced. <clears throat> so when I called you, I said, Angie, I really question whether or not this man needs a dog at this time. It sounds to me <laughs> like he is going through kind of an emotional thing, mm -hmm. and someone who wants the perfect dog, which is what he has described, I just don't, I, you know, I have my reservations, uh, about uh, telling him to get a dog. I'll so just, what do you guys think? <laughs> it's just more questions, and, and it's going to be really hard to find one dog that's going to really meet his entire criteria. Yeah, and I'm thinking that maybe he's looking at it as a social kind of thing. Maybe he's looking for a lady to date or something who has dogs, and maybe by getting out with people who have dogs, that may get him some social life. I just, I'm like you, I just question, and I think maybe he first needs to see a psychologist. <laughs> maybe, but I've got a suggestion. I suggest that he go and, and volunteer at a shelter. Sure. Oh, that and would be work excellent. And with mm -hmm. some of the shelter people and learn about training a dog. I don't hear in this question any experience, whatever. Mm -hmm. exactly. And he wants a smart dog. And I have news <laughs> for you viewers. You think twice before you get yourself a smart, smart dog. dog. <laughs> well, they let's qualify that because we may offend some people. But uh, we're talking about intelligence, and I assume you're talking about herding breeds. <laughs> <laughs> herding breeds in particular. But they, all dogs are smart. It doesn't matter. 
They're all smart They're in their own way. The mess sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but at this, as I say, I I was glad to have received this email because it does need addressing. And a lot of people, as I say, who are going through any kind of traumatic change in their lives, always seem to look for something to cure themselves, right. to mm -hmm. heal mm -hmm. themselves, to make themselves feel better. And dogs certainly do that. Right. But in this particular instance. What would you say? Well, it is a 14 to 15 year commitment too. There and if you this go. is a temporary fix, that may not work later down the road. We may see that dog in a shelter. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that is the, the, the sad thing about it. So uh, in addressing the issues that we have, have talked about, in summation with yours, what would you say with your question? Uh, Really evaluate your lifestyle and see if it goes along with the dog you're going to pick and the energy level of the dog. Mm -hmm. And see if it all blends together mm -hmm. and uh, works in your life. Yeah, you know, and, and another thing, grievance that I have uh, with people who are, are, are elderly is that sometimes their children will get them a puppy. Mm -hmm. oh, as a gift. And then as a trainer, you know, this really mm -hmm. rings through us because that what happens to that puppy if that person passes away? Right. Who's going to take often that puppy? The family members do not want to keep the dogs. Exactly. We see it constantly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Owner died looking for a new right. home. Mm -hmm. It's it's just. Yeah, it's sad. It's very sad because this dog has gotten used to this person, mm -hmm. and it, it is a very sad. There are so many issues, so many issues, and thank goodness we have all of you guys to help us discuss them. So I, with the, uh, the people that want to, to take another dog in, I hope that they will listen to your advice on this because it is, it is tough, especially if you have a multiple dog household, which people have a tendency to do. You know, how do you bring in a new one? I think we all have multiple mm -hmm. dogs. We all, all of us at this table have multiple, there's no doubt. So I just wanted to thank everybody again. I, your contribution to this show is just wonderful, and I cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. And if you guys have questions, send them to us. Let us deal with your problems. This gentleman who emailed me, I'm not sure we can solve his problem. However, we do have a lot of advice at this table, so we will do our best. And uh, let us know what you want to see, what you want to hear, and uh, we will do that, will we not? Try Absolutely, best. absolutely. Have a great week, and we will talk with you later. Dogs. We're talking about dogs. Talking about big dogs, uh-huh. Talking about little dogs, oh yeah. Chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging the hole, thing like that. Dogs, talking about dogs. Laughing dogs, sad dogs, happy dogs, mad dogs, dogs. Just talking about dogs. Lost and alone, running the street, checking the garbage, looking to eat. Out there sad and on their own, the law will get them if they got no home. Dogs. Talking about dogs. Dogs, we're talking about dogs. You say they were angels sent from above, and a year or two later you fell out of love. You dumped them, man, and kicked them out. Now, what the heck was that about? 